1 Corinthians 1, 26-31 Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Remember that we're in the context of division in the church, that the people are saying, I follow this person, I follow that person, I follow that person. What we're really discovering is that they're boasting here in their own wisdom, their own understanding. You know, it's it's that idea of, well, you know, if you don't follow Paul, you're a dummy. Um, if you don't follow John MacArthur, you're a dummy. If you don't follow John Piper, you're you're a dummy. And and we can have that attitude if we're not careful. The first, and we're no we're no different than the Corinthians in that way. They they were suffering from the same sort of pride. And so Paul, in the previous text, reminded them uh, that the gospel's folly. Uh, to the world, but to those who are being saved, it's the wisdom and the power of God. Which means that we are not the wise man, the teacher of the age, or the philosopher. And he's now calling us to remember that. He says, brothers and sisters, my dear Corinthians, think of what you were when you were called. And he's just calling us to reflect. You know, think back. Think back. Not many of you were wise by human standards. <laughs> it's just dressing them down. Look, guys, that, that's just not who you were. You were not the wise people of the city of Corinth. Not many were influential. Like, yeah, there might have been one or two people. Maybe the Chloe's were influential. You know, maybe they had some money. But uh, just by and large, guys, we're, we're not an influential people. Not many were of noble birth. Oh man. And you know, this is this is hard for us to understand to the degree, but the word I would use to think about it is pedigree. You know? Um, and you can have a pedigree that includes your family, your economic background, the schools you attend. But it's those things that, you know, kind of set you apart from the pack. Uh, so not many of you were wise, not many were influential, not many were of noble birth. But God. Why is it? Why is it that the church doesn't attract the wise? Why is it the church doesn't attract the influential? Why is it the church doesn't attract the noble? Because God is in charge. And God chose. He picked. And think back to the to the other verse, words like this. He called. Right? God is sovereign and picking and calling. God chose the foolish things of the world. We're going to come back to this. What are the foolish things? To shame the wise. God wants to shame what is wise. Not wise before him, but wise by human standards. He wants to shame human wisdom. God chose the foolish to shame the wise. God chose, again we see chose come up. Connect that back to here again. So God's God's working here. God's picking people for a reason. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And this is, again, of the world, right? So the weak shame the strong. The foolish shame the wise. God chose the lowly things. And this, back to noble birth the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not. He's saying the nobodies, right? The nobodies. I mean, just think about that, that we have a word for, for, for someone who whose existence is so awful that we just consider them a nobody, a non-exister. Same idea here, the things that are not. So these are all people 
foolish things, weak things, lowly things, despised things. They're all people. And not only are they people, they are the ones who are called. They're Christians, all right? They are Christians. Christians, brothers and sisters, you and I are the foolish, the shameful, the weak, and the lowly, and the despised things of this world. That's who we are. And why would God use us? To nullify the things that are. Scripture tells us that God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So what does God think of wise, powerful, influential men? Influential men and women? He wants to nullify them. He wants to make them obsolete. He wants to show them how useless, how meaningless they are. These things, which are like Babel, climbing up to proclaim their own glory before an all-powerful God, it's an affront to him. It's an affront to him, right? And so, so for what reason? so that no one may boast, so that no one may boast. God has planned through the folly of the gospel to save people so that no one, no one may boast before him. This is God's redemptive plan. This is part of what he is doing. So why does God save us? Yes, he loves us. Why does God save us? For his glory. For his glory and no one else's. This is the primary reason why God saves us. You can tell when we're getting off off base because we'll make this everything. We'll make it God loves us so much that he can't have heaven without us. God loves us so much that he lays his life down for us. Yes, these things are true. But that's not the main reason. The main reason is to glorify himself, to shame the wise, the powerful, and the influential, to shame them, to shame them, to to nullify them so that no one may boast before him. He is all glorious. He will not show share his glory with another. It is because of him, not your wisdom, right? So it's not your wisdom that, that, that gets you saved, not your strength, right? Not the class that you belong to, It's because of him. It is because of God. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. You're one with Christ. Christ who has become for us wisdom from God. Jesus is wisdom from God. He is our wisdom. That is our wisdom. That's one. Jesus is our righteousness. Two, our holiness. Three, our redemption. Four, he's our wisdom. He's our righteousness, our holiness our redemption. He's everything. This, this right here, this right here, what else is there? Jesus is everything. Jesus is everything. Therefore, what should I do with all this? What should I do with all of this? Paul, Paul's been going since verse 10, talking about, you know, unity in the church. We've been, uh, identifying ourselves by Apollos, by a Paul, by Cephas. And he's like, no, 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 guys. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. We don't boast in our wisdom. We don't boast in our understanding. We don't boast in the people we follow. We don't boast in the church that we attend. We don't boast in any of that. That is what the world does. And God delights. He delights. He is pleased to make the world ashamed, to nullify it, to to destroy it, and to glorify himself in the process. So let the one who boasts, let the boaster, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord, in the one who is our everything, 
in the one who has given us everything. And that, brothers and sisters, to tie this back to verse 10, is the key to unity. When we recognize that the one who saves us and keeps us together is Jesus Christ. That's what's going to keep us humble. That's what's going to keep us unified. And um, just as one last note, if you ever think that you're special, just remember verse 27. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Why did God pick me? Because he loves to use foolish and weak and lowly and despised things to shame the strong. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful. And then we can remember anything good in us, anything good in us, anything in us that's not foolish, that's not weak, that's not despised, that's all because of Christ. Praise God.